The nervous system is not the only information signal system in the body. Rather than using neurotransmitters and neurons, a system of glands releases chemical messengers called hormones into the bloodstream. These have profound and long-lasting effects on your body and your behaviour. In this episode of Psych Boost, the endocrine system. The endocrine system contains eight major glands, and between them they regulate systems in the body such as its metabolism, growth, sleep and reproduction. But they also influence psychological factors such as your emotions and your behaviour. In this video I'm going to use these diagrams. If you want a sheet to help you map out the endocrine system, you can grab one for free on my website and fill it in as we go. The link is below. So let's name each of the major glands, an associated hormone and its primary function. Firstly, the major glands that are located in the brain. Starting off, of course, with the pituitary gland. This is often known as the master gland. It's called this because its hormonal secretions influence the release of hormones by other glands across the body. An example is ACTH, adrenocortropic hormone. This is released as part of the fight or flight response, resulting in the release of the stress hormone cortisol in the adrenal glands. Hypothalamus. This is positioned just next to the pituitary gland and it's part of the brain. It works with the pituitary gland to link the nervous system to the rest of the endocrine system. It has a range of functions, one of which being maintaining homeostasis, the balance of your body's processes like heart rate and temperature. An example of a hormone it releases is CRH, cortotropin releasing hormone. This is then detected by the pituitary gland in the fight or flight response. Pineal gland. This modulates your sleep pattern, keeping you to a day-night circadian rhythm. It does this by releasing the hormone melatonin, the thyroid gland. It's butterfly-shaped and is located in the front of the neck. Its main role is to influence metabolic rate, and it does this by releasing thyroid hormones such as thyroxine, thymus. Located in the chest, this structure is only active until puberty, stimulating the development of T-cells which help in your immune response. Thymusin is a hormone. Pancreas. This is located just behind your stomach and regulates your blood sugar levels by releasing the hormones insulin and glucagon. Faults of this system can lead to the disease diabetes. Adrenal glands. Located on the top of each of the kidneys, one function is the release of cortisol and adrenaline, which place the body in a fight or flight response under stress. Testicles for males and ovaries for females. These are the reproductive glands. Testes produce the male sex hormone testosterone known as an androgen. This results in the development of distinctively male secondary sexual characteristics. And the ovaries produce oestrogen, which result in distinctively female secondary sexual characteristics. So that's the major glands of the endocrine system, and some of the over 50 hormones that are active in your body. I understand that you might be struggling to take in so much new information and terminology. In an exam situation, it's usually going to be best if you can clearly explain a few glands and hormones than be very vague about all of them. So if you want to focus your revision, I would pick the pituitary, the pancreas, adrenal glands and sex glands to revise and their associated hormones as they're easy to remember and describe. Bonus fact about the endocrine system. Even though the term hormone is only just over 100 years old, study of this system is ancient there is evidence of Chinese healers extracting sex hormones from urine over 2,000 years ago. Also, diabetes, the disorder that comes about when the pancreas stops producing insulin, has been diagnosed for over 2,000 years by tasting urine for sweetness, popularised by the Greek physician and father of medicine, Hippocrates. I hope you found this Psych Boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychboost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.